Today, in under 20 minutes, I will tell you what you need to know if you want to invest in Microsoft. Trading near 478 per share, I currently have a buy rating on Microsoft stock, but there are several key factors that have a major impact on this thesis that I'll go deeper on. I will give you the positives and negatives from the 1Q26 results, a breakdown of the three financial statements and my Wall Street valuation model, what other analysts on Wall Street say about Microsoft, and my conclusion on Microsoft's future and what you should do. So why should you listen to me? My name is Ken Freeman. I'm a CFA charter holder. I'm also a professor of finance and economics. I have 20 years of Wall Street experience, and I'm the guy that investment banks like JP Morgan and asset managers like BlackRock hire to train their financial analysts on Wall Street. In my research, I discovered six things that got me very excited and six red flags to watch out for with Microsoft. If you're enjoying this, please smash that like button. Microsoft beat Wall Street estimates on both revenues and EPS, but the stock pulled back on increased spending, which I will break down in detail, so stay tuned. Let's cover the red flags first. Microsoft spending on AI infrastructure skyrocketed nearly 75% in one quarter. Investors need to keep an eye on this and ensure that free cash flow is not negatively impacted. First quarter capital expenditures, including leases, Rishi, 34.9 billion. That was up from 24 billion in the preceding quarter. Microsoft is hiking Microsoft 365 prices worldwide with some businesses and frontline plans jumping more than 30%. These steep increases risk frustrating core customers and pushing them toward competitors. I sense frustration. OpenAI losses carved $3.1 billion out of Microsoft's bottom line. And OpenAI can now choose other clouds, even after committing $250 billion in Azure spent. A lot of money. While there is tremendous long-term potential, losses and the loss of exclusivity do hurt. The OpenAI stake, that resulted in a $3 billion uh, negative impact to net income. So the losses at OpenAI are starting to drag even more on Microsoft's uh, net income, guys. Microsoft publicly states that it cannot supply enough compute even as demand surges. Capacity shortages mean lost deals, lost momentum, and frustrated enterprise buyers. Demand remains significantly ahead of the capacity we have available. And while we're accelerating the amount of capacity we're bringing online, we will continue to balance Azure revenue growth with the growing needs across our first party apps and AI solutions, our own R&D efforts, and the end of life server replacements. Therefore, we now expect to be capacity constrained through at least the end of our fiscal year. Switzerland says that Microsoft 365 lacks sufficient encryption and risk government level data exposure and Azure slowdowns and service drops showed up across Europe and the US. Potential data exposure and questionable reliability are a major hit to global trust. It's about trust. Microsoft cut AI sales targets and the stock slipped over the last month. Beating revenue in EPS was not enough to support the stock for AI hungry investors. On the surface here, you got beats across the board, Melissa, but you see the stock still down. EPS was a beat, revenue was a beat, and even Azure cloud growth was a big beat here, 40% compared to the 38.2% expected. But it's really unclear what's dragging the stock lower. Intelligent Cloud only beat by a tiny bit, perhaps also a run-up of the shares into earnings. They hit that $4 trillion market cap as well this week. Here's what got me really excited. The cloud engine delivered massive double-digit growth again. The world's largest cloud platform is accelerating, a sign of deep enterprise reliance. Microsoft Cloud revenue was $49.1 billion ahead of expectations and grew 26% and 25% in constant currency. Microsoft announced a record $17.5 billion to build out India's AI infrastructure and sovereign capabilities. Planting this kind of capital in the world's fastest growing digital economy cements Microsoft as the backbone of India's AI revolution. And besides, I'm moving to India. Healthcare providers massively expanded usage of Microsoft's AI tools. That's not theory. That is real, regulated, high-stakes adoption accelerating at blistering speed. In health, Dragon Copilot helps providers automate critical workflows. This quarter alone, we helped document over 17 million patient encounters, up nearly 5x year over year. More than 650 healthcare organizations have purchased our ambient listening tech 
to date, including University of Michigan Health, where over a thousand physicians are actively using it. Microsoft announced a $5.4 billion investment to expand AI and cloud capacity in Canada. Expanding global investment today means growing international revenue in the future. Even with hiring softness, LinkedIn still expanded. A platform that grows despite macro headwinds shows structural strength and pricing power. LinkedIn revenue increased 10% and 9% in constant currency driven by marketing solutions. The talent solutions business was impacted by continued weakness in the hiring market. This is what everyone is missing. GitHub hit a historic surge, pulling in developers at an unprecedented pace. Microsoft owns the home for global software creation and controls the AI tools these developers rely on. GitHub is now home to over 180 million developers and the platform is growing at the fastest rate in its history, adding a developer every second. 80% of new developers on GitHub start with Copilot within the first week. Overall, the rise of AI coding agents is driving record usage with over 500 million pull requests merged over the past year. When it comes to any stock, I let the numbers tell the story, and that involves looking at the company's financial statements. Would you buy a house without knowing the size, location, dimensions, or condition? That is exactly what you're doing when you buy a stock without understanding the three financial statements. If you want to see how I train the world's top financial analysts on Wall Street, check out my school community, Win Like Wall Street. Just scan the QR code on the screen. The balance sheet shows us how the business is funded. If assets grow faster than liabilities, equity increases and we win. At fiscal year end June 30th, Microsoft had over 30 billion of cash. And if we combine that with cash invested in securities, it's almost 95 billion. And that has continued to grow to over 102 billion at the end of September 30th. This gives the company a stockpile of cash to invest in the future, whether it's Office 365, AI data centers, or their rapidly growing cloud business. PP&E increased over 51% since last year, and that growth has continued into the first quarter. The bulk of the capital expenditures growing the PP&E is due to the numerous AI data centers that Microsoft is building worldwide. Debt decreased by $8.4 billion to $43.2 billion in the last 15 months, from June 30th, 24 to September 30th, 25. Microsoft is one of only two publicly traded companies with debt rated AAA, the other's Johnson & Johnson. That is a better rating than the U.S. government. Despite massive CapEx spend, Microsoft is still net cash, meaning cash is greater than debt by almost $59 billion. This means that they could pay off their debt completely and still have $59 billion left over. So what's the takeaway? Microsoft has a large pile of cash, its AAA rated debt is declining, and it is increasing CapEx without adding more leverage. The income statement shows us if the company is generating profits. We want to see revenues grow faster than expenses, which will grow profits. The way we determine how effective a company is at generating profits is via margin. Revenue minus expenses equals income, income over revenues equals margin. If a company has higher revenues and lower expenses, it will have higher margins. If revenues grow faster than expenses, margins will get bigger expand, which is what we want to see. Last year, Microsoft generated a massive $282 billion in revenue, with 66% coming from server, cloud, and Microsoft 365. Despite the high revenue base, revenue growth has averaged over 15% in the last two years, and it's over 18% growth the last quarter. Gross margin has been solid and steady over the last five years, and that has continued through the first quarter. While net margin has remained relatively flat, the EBITDA and operating margins have both expanded significantly. Despite rapid top-line growth, Microsoft's expanding margins show incredible cost control and operating efficiency. Over the last five years, revenue has doubled. But even more impressive than that, net income has more than doubled. Remember, revenue is what you make, net income is what you keep. So Microsoft is flexing its operating efficiency muscles. So what's the takeaway? Revenue growth in the high teens, world-class cost control and growing net income means more money in the pockets of shareholders, which we love to see. The cash flow statement tells us where the cash is generated by the company and there are three buckets. Operating, which is the cash the company generates internally. Investing, which is the cash demanded for long-term growth. Financing, which is the cash the company generates externally. When we add these together, we get the net change in cash. We want to see companies generating cash making this positive, not losing cash, which would make this negative. Operating cash flow is positive and growing rapidly. Operating cash flow increased over $17 billion in the last year, primarily driven by the strong net income that Microsoft is generating. While Wall Street has complained about the level of CapEx the MAG7 is spending on AI, Microsoft has increased its CapEx, but it has done so methodically without negatively impacting free cash flow. Free cash flow is the lifeblood of our DCF valuation, and 
And when it increases, intrinsic value does too, which is great for investors. Like we have seen before with Microsoft, maturities and sales of investments over the last five years was nearly $220 billion. This is the money that Microsoft is making from its invested cash, but that isn't even the craziest part. Share repurchases and dividends over the last five years were $218 billion. So Microsoft is using returns on its cash to pay dividends and buy back shares without impacting the business. The trend of returning cash to shareholders continued in 1Q26, with Microsoft buying back 8 million shares for $4 billion. And the prices that they paid were in the low 500s, which is at a substantial discount to intrinsic value, which is great for shareholders. So what's the takeaway? Despite increasing CapEx for AI investment, Microsoft is generating growing free cash flow, and Microsoft is using its returns generated from its cash to reward shareholders with share repurchases. So what does this all mean for the valuation of Microsoft stock? Let's cover that next. On Wall Street, we build a discounted cash flow model to measure the intrinsic value of companies. Because companies generate cash flow and we projected the three financial statements, we could take these cash flows, discount them back to today to get a current intrinsic value for the company. We cannot do this type of valuation with crypto, baseball cards, or art because they have no cash flows. As you can see on the left, we take specific line items that we projected from the three financial statements. We use these line items to calculate free cash flow to the firm or FCFF. To this, we add a terminal value, which is the value from the end of the model out to infinity because the company does not stop operating when our model ends in five years. We discount these cash flows back to today to get to total enterprise value. To get to equity value, we strip out the debt, we add the cash, we strip out non-controlling interest, we add associate investments. We get an intrinsic equity value of 5.036 trillion dollars. We divide by the current shares outstanding, we get a current implied share price of about $678. Compared to the recent close of 478.56, that's a 41.6% discount, which is a screaming buy rating. On Wall Street, if a stock is trading at greater than a 20% discount, it's considered a buy because it provides us a margin of safety. Stick around because I'll give you my thoughts on how to play Microsoft later in the video. Also, feel free to come to my live stream every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, where I'll answer your questions on this video and anything else. The link is in the description. So what does Wall Street have to say about Microsoft stock? Let's cover that next. Wall Street is bullish on Microsoft with a consensus rating of strong buy, as its leadership position in multiple verticals make it a prime AI beneficiary. Barclays has an overweight rating on Microsoft with a price target of 625. They feel that Copilot and Azure AI provide clear monetization levers into 2026. They also noted that recent pricing actions help offset elevated AI CapEx. DA Davidson has a buy rating with a price target of 650. They mentioned the OpenAI partnership positions Microsoft to remain the fastest growing hyperscaler in a wide range of scenarios. They also stated that Microsoft remains the biggest winner in the AI ramp. Citigroup has a buy rating on Microsoft stock and they raised their price target to 682 from 680. They raised their price target on improving Azure trajectory and clearer AI monetization across the stack. They also see the OpenAI partnership deepening product differentiation. CapIQ gives me a sense of how other analysts on Wall Street view the company. 52 analysts cover Microsoft on Wall Street. The target price price ranges from a low of 483, which is a 1% increase, to a high of 730, which is a 53% increase. The median is 634, which is a 32% increase. The overall rating on a scale of 1 to 5 is 1.29, which is a buy rating. You should seek the advice of an investment professional always. I do not know your individual financial situation. This content is meant to educate and is not investment advice. That being said, I'm a huge believer in Microsoft and it's currently the third largest position in my portfolio with a weight of 9.2%. If you decide to buy Microsoft, you need the right entry point, which I'll reveal shortly. Microsoft 365 continues to boost Microsoft's highest margin software segment. The core Microsoft 365 franchise is still climbing even before the full AI monetization wave hits. They can monetize in productivity apps and off the shelf uh, ERP, Salesforce automation, custom apps, vibe coding, security, infrastructure. Every CIO is, is going to Microsoft because they're the one vendor they want to be in a rowboat to a deserted island because they have the entire stack infused with AI. Microsoft is the largest enterprise software company in the world. It is a leader in business intelligence, cybersecurity, and enterprise resource planning. And Microsoft is exploiting its dominance in software to monetize artificial intelligence. Analysts raise projections for both Microsoft's revenue and next year's earnings, signaling synchronized acceleration. Revenue and earnings growth at the same time signals growing enterprise demand and a strengthening AI monetization base. Q1 revenue, let's look at the top line, 77.67 billion. 
That looks like a beat. It looks like the street was closed at 75.55 billion. It looks like Q1 Azure, other cloud revenue, XFX, uh, I'm seeing plus 39%. Q1 Intelligent Cloud overall, 30.9 30 billion. The street was close to 30.18 billion. Microsoft hit a 52 week high of 555 in late October, and it's down almost 14% since then. Despite delivering incredible financial results and massive growth, the stock has traded down, which presents a window of opportunity for savvy investors to grab Microsoft at a nice discount. My model shows a value of 678, which is a 42% discount at current levels. On Wall Street, we buy with a margin of safety of at least 20%. So Microsoft is a buy at current levels. And this is the biggest discount that we have seen in the five times that we have covered Microsoft on this channel. I would be looking to buy Microsoft at 565 and below to provide a 20% margin of safety. For a AAA rated company with a dominant position in the cloud computing, enterprise software, and operating systems verticals, Microsoft has significant upside with modest downside, and I think it's the safest AI play, presenting the biggest discount amongst the MAG7. Microsoft stock is presenting investors with an incredible buying opportunity in a company with ironclad financials, and it'll help you rest easy knowing that you have the best AI company in your portfolio. If you like this and want to see another in-depth stock valuation, check out my Amazon video here or my meta video here. And if you found this valuable, please share this with someone who you think would enjoy this. As always, be relentless.